Hello, thanks for joining us. You are watching Australia's best online football program. We're coming to you this week from training down here at Bayswater City where the Basie boys sit on top of the table. More about that with Ashley Morrison with the State League highlights. We'll also catch up with Mr Glory himself, Jamie Harnwell, and we'll also catch up with two young girls destined for the stars. And don't forget to be on the lookout for our trivia question for your chance to win a free iPad 2. All that and more on Football 360. But first, there are players and characters at our football clubs who inspire us and remind us what the game is simply about. David Deacon and Ryan Holdsworth from the Perth Saint Soccer Club were two such players. Now, each year, the players from the club get together to honour their memory in the annual Deeks Cup. Dave was just, he was always a highlight of the party. He was fun and he was just, he was a great footballer, a great person. You don't have to look too hard to notice Perth Saints boast some of the best players Australia has produced in the history of the sport, albeit if they're retired. Robbie Zavika, Robbie Dunn, just to name a few. They've been here for years and have been an integral part of the Deeks Cup, which was formed six years ago by David Deacon. Dave was training with the, the Seniors World Cup team, because we, we play in that as well. And uh, on the way home from training, Dave um, had a heart attack and passed away. The Cup is an annual challenge between the Masters and social teams. Uh, Dixie, look, he was football through and through. He, you know, he came out here in the early days of football. Uh, everyone in WA football knew Dixie. He was a real character and he was a real, real sad loss. And, uh, you know, the game that we have today commemorates his loss. He was just a great guy and, and a great man and it was very unfortunate he, you know, left this uh, earth so early. That was five years ago, but then another blow for the club. Ryan Holdsworth, affectionately known as Nugget, was a young player in the social team, lost his battle with depression. Uh, young Ryan Holdsworth was, uh, was taken too early. I mean, that was a, a real wake-up call for a lot of our young, young fellas. Certainly a courageous player. Uh, he's the smallest guy out there. He was even smaller than me, if you can believe it. He uh, didn't hold back, didn't let his size stop him or anything like that. Just hard at the ball. And so it was that time of year again for both sides to clash. Who would win the Ryan Holdsworth medal for the best and fairest performance and which team would prevail? By the final whistle, the socials mustered a victory. Yeah, on behalf of the uh, social lads, I'd just like to thank the old boys and everyone for coming down today. It's a very special day for the club. Uh, remembering two absolute legends of our club, uh, David Deacon and uh, Ryan Holsworth. So, uh, this is for those guys who have a few beers uh, this afternoon to celebrate. Cheers, guys. Uh, I'm awarding the fairest and best. It was a very hard decision because um, we didn't watch the game very much. <laughs> <laughs> we did notice Dan. We know that Dixie's here with us, looking down on us, and that's why we keep playing for it every year We do our best. For the past 15 years, he's epitomised the spirit of WA football. Tough, determined and always wearing his heart on his sleeve. But it's a new era now for Jamie Harnwell. After a colourful career with a Perth glory, the former captain has taken on a brand new challenge. He's had a stellar career, crafting his skill at state club Sorrento and then going on to play in the NSL and A-League, becoming the most capped player in the history of Perth glory. Since retiring in 2011, Jamie Harnwell has switched his focus to coaching the Perth Glory women's team in the W League. But it hasn't been the best start for Glory's favourite son, the team hampered by injury to Matilda stars Sam Kerr and Katie Gill. Fortunately, the last game against Newcastle brought some joy to Harnwell, his girls thumping the Jets four goals to two after some delightful goals. And this is how people remember you, so, you know, you don't want to go out on a, on a bad note. Hanwell admits his new role has been challenging. Coaching of any levels is tough. 
Look, I've got nothing but respect for the girls. They, you know, they train as if they're full-time professionals when they're holding down jobs and studying, and you know, their commitment and attitude second to none. They've not caused me any real problems, too much grief, but uh, no, it's been a pleasure to coach them. When he's not marshalling his troops on the field, Harnwell is passing on his skills to juniors around the state. And what of his future plans? One day, coach the Glory A-League side to a championship would be a, a huge feat, so um, maybe that'll be something in the future. But for now, playing in the back or up front for Sorrento is enough to keep him in the game with hopes of going one step better than last year. We had a great season last year bar the final. Uh, we won the cup, we got into the, to the grand final and uh, you know we've got to set ourselves those goals again. If, uh, it's, a, it's a good club, we've got a lot of great players and a, a great team spirit so we'll go out there and uh, try and win things again this year. Want to be in the running to win a free iPad 2? It's easy. Football 360 is giving you the chance to win a 16 gig 3G iPad 2 in the month of May. All you need to do is answer our weekly trivia questions. This week we're asking, in episode 3, Football 360 spoke to which former Perth Glory coach? If you know the answer, email us at football360 at footballwest.com.au. Entries close May 28th and the lucky winner will be announced on May 31st. And don't forget, tune in next week for another chance. Well, here at Perth Glory, we thought we'd practice some of the things that make QBE great. Like 125 years of experience. We trolled a new fraud replacement policy. Can I have a... Uh... Thanks, Bess. And comprehensive cover? Well, that seemed like a pretty good idea too. Turns out, what's great for your insurance, not so good for football. QBE. See how competitive we are with your insurance. Matilda Katie Gill took some time out at the girls' day out and was impressed with some of the stars she uncovered. Girls are taking over. Well, taking over NRB Stadium anyway. The Banquest Girls' Day Out is a Football West initiative aimed at young female players to help develop their skills and meet their heroes. Football is Australia's fastest growing sport for young girls. As you can see, there are about 100 girls behind us taking part in the football program. They're going to see some skill sessions with Tom Samani and other Football West coaches. Today we have two superstars from the Girls' Day Out. We have Rasheen and Siobhan. Girls, how did you get into football? Well, I started when I was seven because one of my friends um, decided to do it and from then on I've just loved the game. I enjoy like um, dribbling, especially like, scoring goals and just playing with all my mates. I just find it lots of fun and yeah. What about you Siobhan? I like to defend and to tackle and to sometimes, I don't know me, but I sometimes like to score goals. And you both have different accents, so where are we from? Glasgow and Scotland. I think we're both Celtic fans, is that right? Yeah. And now congratulations to young Rasheen who made it to the under 13 All-Star team at the National Championships in Canberra. Well done Rasheen. Well, time to look at the Match of the Week highlights now with Ashley Morrison. Balcata, playing just their second game at home this season, were behind as early as the third minute. Robert Sharshar clipped a ball forward for David Onoforo, who squared to the unmarked Greg Sharland. Simon Eltonbot slid in to block his shot, but then simply toe-poked the ball into the path of Niederberger, who fired home against his former club to give Perth the early lead. In the 54th minute against the run of play, Naglieri whipped in a corner for Perth, which Trent K met and doubled their lead. And two minutes later, Perth had a third. A long ball over the top, fans Charland in space on the left. He beat Pavlovich, drew the keeper and squared to the unmarked Robert Sharsha, who had the easiest of tap-ins to make it 3-0 to the visitors. Balcata kept plugging away, and just after the hour mark they pulled a goal back. Tong picked out Thornley on the left, who headed the ball infield to Mo Attack. He rolled it to Misewski, 
who coolly side-footed past Dunn into the keeper's top left-hand corner. But it was only ever a consolation goal. Perth victors 3-1. Well, we try to keep it on the floor as much as we can. You can't do it all the time, but we tried to. We, we today we tried to use uh, our two centre midfielders a little bit more than than we did last week, and, and that paid off as well. So. And Robbie Shaw, yeah. Shaw nicked him with a goal as well. Robbie's Robbie's always going to do things like that, and um, he's, he's he's very quick and he's very inventive. So with him on one side and Greg on the other, when they both fire, then if, for us it's uh, obviously a hard team to beat. In other results from round seven, ECU Joondalup fought back from being 2-0 down to draw 3 all with the NTC, while three goals in five minutes sealed a 4-2 victory for Sterling Lions over the Western Knights. Armadale recorded back-to-back -back wins for the first time, but in the big matchups, Bayswater City gave Florida Athena six of the best as the visitors had two men sent off, and Sorrento were back to winning ways with a 2-1 win over Inglewood which means that Bayswater City and Perth sit top of the league ladder from Florida Athena and Sterling Lions, while ECU Joondalup slip to second last as Armadale start to climb the ladder. But a couple of wins will soon lift these off the bottom and into the top half of the table. There are no league fixtures this weekend as the second round of the State League Cup will be played. In the all Premier League clashes, Perth take on the Western Knights and Sorrento meet arch rivals ECU Joondalup. Possible upsets could be a Swan United win over Inglewood. Swan sit top of the first division, while Inglewood have lost their last three Premier League games. Shamrock Rovers may be another dark horse when they meet Balcata. Shamrock made the quarterfinals last year, and Balcata have lost their last two Premier League games and conceded three goals a game. Tune in next week to find out how all these teams got on. Well, that wraps up another exciting show for Football 360 this week. Don't forget to drop us a line and tell us your football story. And for all the latest news and events, check out the Football West website. We'll see you again next week, but until then, bye for now.